Hello, welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be comparing the big brother to the little brother. What? We're going to be comparing the 1460s to the 1461s. These two very similar, but there is some little differences. So if you have any of these two pairs, please leave your experiences down in the comments below so others can benefit from it. For me personally, the ones that I have are the 1460s made in England. And also I have the 1461 the smooth leather with the white stitching i forgot the name of it but those are what i'm going to be comparing it to so you can have different results based on the type of leather that you do have with your boots or your shoes so let's get into it when it comes to appearance the 1460s are the most popular doc martens out there they're very iconic these are the ones whenever people think about doc martens these are what they think about i believe is a eyelet very simple with the airwear doc martens sole and then also you have the classic doc martens stitching when it comes to the 1461s very simple too they're basically a low cut of the 1460s i really like how different or unique it looks it looks just a little bit dressier but you can also dress down with it they're basically a low cut 1460s they have the dr martin stitching and also they got the airwear soles which once you break into them they get very comfortable these are my experiences with these two when i was breaking into them when it comes to the 1460s my biggest pain points were the heel of my feet and then also i had a pain point where my toes would bend around there for some reason i just felt some type of pain but eventually within a week or two they were all gone very simple I actually have a video on breaking into my Doc Martens right here if you want to watch it. But when it comes to the 1461s, very nice. The biggest issues that I did have with these breaking into them were that the 1461s, they're more of a low cut or they are a low cut shoes. And with it being low cut, it was digging into my ankles, like all around my ankles from the back part to the side part maybe because it was a little bit too strong right out the box but eventually my feet got used to it some things that i did to help me with that was wear thicker socks and every time that you're breaking into doc martens do it gradually started out wearing it for 30 minutes then i moved into an hour and so forth and so forth so the doc martens i would say it's very even when it comes to breaking into them it just take a little time that's the biggest issue with doc martens take some time to break into them also when it comes to sizing these two identical literally they fit the same there's no difference doc martens are true to size if you want to see a sizing guide I have a video right here very simple it will lay everything out make it very easy on you this is my final thoughts when it comes to these two doc martens i feel like they're both vital everybody needs a pair of these two in their collection or it fits the majority of people the reason why is i like to intertwine with my docks or my shoes in general i don't want to wear one too much that it looks messed up or ugly or some people like that appearance but for me i don't so i intertwine with both of them the 1460s they have the most varieties out there it makes it very simple very easy for anyone to fit into their style or in their wardrobe or anything like that it fits literally the mass and then the 1460s they're very nice they fit a good variety too probably the only downfall of the 1461s is that since it's low cut i generally don't wear it during the winter time i do during the fall summer and spring but when it hits winter time i kind of put it away i don't want my ankles to get cold even though i can wear thicker socks i'd rather just wear the 1460s that's why they're so versatile hopefully this video gave you a little insight about these two shoes and if you want to see another comparison the 1460s to the chelsea boots the 2976 here's that video right here thanks for watching peace